Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. I want to go over the fabrication of the radiographic guide and surgical guides in planning for a two implant overdenture. So what we will do for the purpose of our exercise is simply take an acrylic burr and trim down and trim off these little healing caps so what we wind up with is a model as though this was the patient presenting to us before the implants were ever placed. What we typically do is mark the midline of the lower ridge and then come on in with a Bowley gauge or a ruler and measure lateral to the midline. So I measure over from the midline seven to eight millimeters to the left and seven to eight millimeters to the right. I will typically move over about eight millimeters. So then I've got another couple lines here, eight millimeters over and eight millimeters over. And then what I try to do is to look at the center of the crest of the ridge and do my best estimate on where can I mark my cross here so that I am in the, as near as I can be in the center of the crest of the ridge and this may need to come labial a little bit and on this side perhaps labial just a little bit. And again the reason we take the center and move eight millimeters either side of the center if later on we ever wanted to add more implants we have perfect spacing for placing one implant between the two that are already there and we have real good spacing so that we've got plenty of room going seven to eight millimeters distal to this implant that we can put another implant here if we ever wanted to staying well anterior to the mental foramen. We try to set it up in such a way that a fulcrum line that would go across the two implants is as near as we can to the anterior part of the mouth. Now the next thing we want to do is plan for some orientation for our implants and that's where the x-ray guide will come in. What I've done with another cast is here's our location for our implants. Again we've taken a small round burr and made a small depression on the crest of the ridge in the area where we propose to place the two implants. The next thing I've done is to block out the cast. So you can see we've placed pink base plate wax to block out areas along the buckle and labial of the cast. And we've also placed block out in these lateral throat form areas that very often have an undercut area in them. At this point what we want to do is place the cast in a dental surveyor and we have an, one of our drill blanks in the dental surveyor so we place our dental surveyor table on the dental surveyor and what we try to do here is to orient our cast so that the occlusal plane or the mean of the residual ridge is parallel with the floor or our proposed occlusal plane remembering that our occlusal plane would start from approximately the center of the retromolar pad and come forward parallel to the average of the residual ridge and then it's this orientation that we would use to orient our implant. Here's the location and then this would be the orientation. So when the surgery is done to, for these two implants to be placed, it works better for our planning for our overdenture if the long axis of these two implants are parallel to one another, both in the buccolingual plane as well as the anterior posterior plane. Or you could say the AP plane and the sagittal plane. As I do with all my casts when they've been placed in a surveyor table, I want to draw marks on the posterior aspect of the cast. So if I take the cast out of the surveyor table and replace it in the surveyor table, it can go very consistently in the same orientation. So what I'm going to do in preparation for making my x-ray or radiographic guide is to put some lubrication on my model and I'm fairly liberal with my lubrication. Making the surgical guides for the overdenture we need at least half of a sheet of triad and in some cases even more than half a sheet of triad. What I'm using here is pretty much an entire sheet of the triad material and I knead it together in my hands and then roll it and I lay this on the crest of the ridge 
and adapt the triad over the ridge very much as though I were making a record bass. Now I don't necessarily have to go all the way back to the lateral throat form areas like I would if I were making a denture, but I do want to have fairly good coverage of my edentulous ridge. The other thing that I need for the purpose of the x-ray guide in particular, I take my thumb and forefinger and pinch the triad material up to make somewhat of an occlusal rim from it. And you'll see why that's important in just a few minutes. I have it set up so that I have a, an area that looks very much like an occlusal rim on my cast. The next thing I will do is take my number 11 blade and carefully just trim this labial area of the cast so that I can see where the crest of my ridge is because I want to see very nicely where those two areas are that I had planned for my implants. I take for this purpose the largest drill blank which is the 4.2 millimeter drill blank and I will not need this drill blank for making surgical guides. This is just a matter of convenience. So in the areas where I'm planning on placing the implants, I place a finger on the lingual of my proposed x-ray guide here and just take my drill blank and just press it into the soft triad, making an indentation in the triad right over the area where I'm proposing to place my implant. And I do the same thing where I'm proposing to place my other implant. So, so what I now have is what looks like a record base that has these two depressed areas pressed into it with the large drill blank that are right over the areas where we propose placing our implants. I will now take this and place it in the curing oven for three minutes. So here we have our record base that's been cured. You can see that I used the arbor band and then I just took an acrylic burr and I freshen the acrylic and I ground out the area where these depressions are. So what I want to do now is place my cast back in the surveyor. I bring in my surveyor. I'm going to put in a two millimeter drill blank or the two millimeter drill itself. And what I have here is a two millimeter drill blank. And as we had done before, I want to orient this drill blank exactly over the spot. What I'm now going to do is to place in some triad gel. Again, without rotating the vertical spindle of the surveyor at all, I lower it into the triad gel. If we take the large Peter K. Thomas instrument, that is a very nice instrument to sort of shape and coax the triad gel so that it surrounds that drill blank very nicely. So once that's been surrounded, I want to just pick up a handheld light curing unit and cure this for 20 seconds from the labial and 20 seconds from the lingual. So now we've cured this area of triad gel that we've placed on for 20 seconds from each side. I loosen the knurled nut and lift the vertical spindle of my surveyor straight up in the air. You may remember from the other times when we've done this that I come in with my plier that you can check out from the desk and first rotate it and then carefully lift it straight up to lift this out. Line it up perfectly and exactly over the spot where we want the implant placed. Lift the vertical spindle straight up in the air. Squirt in some triad gel. Lower the vertical spindle of the surveyor down without rotating it at all. Come in with my large Peter K. Thomas instrument and just tease or coax the triad gel around the drill blank and then again cure this for 20 seconds just like we did the other one. And we have now cured the other side for 20 seconds and so just loosening the surveyor tool and lifting it straight in the air. And what we have now is the two blanks that have been placed in there are perfectly parallel to one another both in a sagittal plane and in a AP and medial laterally. So what I'm going to do now is just to take an acrylic burr and trim the excess material. Just trim that down level and also trim the cervical aspect so that I've got the cervical of this trimmed there. 
So we have now trimmed our triad material and we can again take these two millimeter by 10 millimeter blanks that we talked about for our single tooth implant as well. So I'll remove this from the cast for easier access and now just push in. And again, I just try to make the cervical aspect of the blank even with the tissue. So I've overshot it a little bit. I just take my plaster knife, my buffalo knife, and push it back up so that we secure these and they can't move while we're taking the panoramic radiograph or the cephalogram. Typically what I like to do is take just a little bit more triad gel and place just a little bit over the top of the drill blank so it can't move while we're taking any of our radiographs. So for the sake of this discussion, we're going to presume that the angle we have selected is just fine. We took our radiograph and everything worked out good, and now we're going to proceed to make our surgical guides. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.